Hi everybody, Dr. Sunil Dand, internal medicine physician. Should I get the COVID-19 vaccine? Yes, I'm asking that question as a doctor. And I'm going to explain to you the unique situation that I'm in shortly and throw it open to a scientific debate. Uh, but firstly, right off the bat, I know vaccines are an emotive issue for many people. I am a doctor that recommends vaccinations to all of my patients, routine vaccinations. I'm a great reader of the history of medicine. And when you read about what vaccinations have done over the centuries, including for illness, like smallpox, it is truly remarkable. Smallpox has been completely eradicated, used to ravage whole communities, killed hundreds of millions of people over the centuries, and we no longer have to worry about it. Traditionally, what vaccines involve is injecting a small portion of a virus or inactivated portion of a virus into someone, provoke an immune response so that next time they encounter the virus, they don't get severe symptoms or ideally get no symptoms at all. The COVID-19 vaccine released in December has obviously been produced in record time. We didn't have a choice. We hadn't even heard of COVID a couple of years ago, and it's already been rolled out to millions of people. I've been recommending it to my patients, especially high-risk groups first, and I have multiple family members, including my parents, who have received the vaccine. I have not, however, received it yet, and I'm on the fence. Let me explain to you what's happened. So back in February of last year, February 2020, I came down with what I thought was a mild respiratory viral infection. At the time, we didn't know that COVID was among us. This is the east coast of the USA and, and no testing was available anyway. So I recovered at home in a few days, but I did have some unusual symptoms, including a lingering dry cough. And I was suspicious afterwards for a few weeks that it may have been COVID. I had a blood antibody serum test in May of 2020, which did return positive for IgG. And then I put two and two together and realized that I must have had COVID. Then over the next few months, I had several tests. We had to, as part of my job, have finger prick tests for antibodies, which are not as accurate. But nevertheless, they kept returning positive, which did provide me with some reassurance. Then in December, the vaccine was released. And since then, I continued to have those finger prick tests and still had antibodies. Finally, I had another blood serum test and it's now the end of March 2021 and I had a test this week and I still have IgG and this test was actually more quantified and I had a high level of antibody. So here's a dilemma I'm in. I've been learning science since I was in elementary school. I've obviously since become a doctor. I do not believe that if you have antibodies, you need a vaccination for any illness. Uh, thinking about how we uh, practice medicine, how I practice, how Every doctor, per my understanding, practices medicine. In my clinic, for example, we test for antibodies all the time for illnesses like hepatitis A, uh, measles. And if people have antibodies, we never give them a vaccine. I've made videos previously on many aspects of immunity and the COVID-19 vaccine, but I'd like to touch on a few points here. The first point is that I'm not aware of any vaccine out there which will ever give you more immunity than if you're naturally recovered from the illness yourself. And of course, you don't want to have the illness, but if you've naturally recovered from it, my understanding as a doctor and therefore scientist is that those antibodies will always be better than a vaccine. And if you know any differently, please let me know. The second issue relates to how long you should wait for after you have an illness to get the vaccine. Now, the current recommendation from the CDC is to wait for 90 days, so about three months. And I'm not sure where this 90 day figure came from. I think it may have been pulled out of thin air uh, because there's not too much evidence out there. There's not too much data for this number. And again, coming back to a logical question, if we are suggesting that recovering from an illness the antibodies and immunity only last for 90 days, then how could a vaccine possibly last any longer than 90 days? Do you follow the logic? The other issue relates to asymptomatic spread. And there's no evidence that having a vaccine ever prevents asymptomatic spread of an illness. If you have the vaccine and it works a vaccine for any illness, then it will stop you from getting symptoms. But theoretically, you could be carrying a few virus particles in your nose and pass it on to somebody else. From a clinical perspective, my concern is that if you already have antibodies and you have a vaccination, it could provoke what we call a hyperimmune response. And they, there have been case reports of this. Now, I'm somebody who tries to eat healthy. I work out every day. I'm relatively young. I'm exactly the type of demographic, if you read the case reports, that is prone to a hyperimmune response. And remember, in medicine, our motto is do no harm. 
There are some people out there that I've encountered who say, oh, just take the vaccine. It's far easier. Just have the shot. And that doesn't sit well with me as a doctor and a scientist. I practice internal and lifestyle medicine. I'm all about prevention. I um, value my body. I value anybody's body. And I'm never in favor of any intervention, whether it's a medicine or an injection that is not needed. But as of now, it's the end of March 2021, I feel like I'm being backed into a corner here because there are news reports, and you've probably seen these as well, that very soon they're going to introduce vaccine passports in order to be able to do everyday things. And I'm somebody who loves to travel. I like restaurants. I like bars. And if we have to show a vaccine pass in order to get into these places or or travel, then I'm going to have to uh, logistically and practically consider what to do. And uh, so far, I've read about about all of the vaccines. If it comes to me having to take a vaccine, I'll probably go for the Johnson & Johnson one as opposed to the Pfizer or Moderna vaccines, which are two shots. The Johnson & Johnson is one uh, shot only, and it's also not an mRNA vaccine. That's what I'm thinking now. I'm not sure. I'll probably make a, a video about this if and when the time comes. I believe that there could be thousands, if not millions of people who are in my situation. And uh, I do believe that uh, having antibodies should be the equivalent if the time comes for a vaccine pass. If you have antibodies, that should be considered the same as having a vaccine. And this is just me. I can't emphasize this point enough. I'm not talking about everyone here. Um, I am, as I said, recommending the vaccine to high risk groups, but it's important to be protected. If you have antibodies, you should, according to all the science that I'm aware of, be protected. And medicine is not a uh, arbitrary science. I never believe in rules for everybody. Medicine especially is a a case by case science. And there's often more gray in medicine than black and white. And I believe in individualized medicine. And nobody knows all of the answers, whether it's me, anyone else who claims to be an expert or even Dr. Fauci himself. Medicine and science is constantly evolving and we're learning more all the time. And aside from everything else I've mentioned from a purely humanitarian standpoint, it makes more sense that somebody else gets the vaccine first ahead of me anyway, if I already have antibodies. And that would apply to most people who have already recovered from COVID. So I'm open for debate here. Let's talk about this, especially if you are medically trained or have any science background. Let me know what your thoughts are. Would you get the vaccine if you were me? Let's discuss this. Thanks for listening, Dr. Sunil Dan. Follow me on MedStoic Lifestyle Medicine, Facebook and YouTube. We will speak again next time.